So what does this appointment mean to, to you personally? So this appointment as the Interim Director of Schools for MPS um, is quite an honor for me and I'm quite um, humbled to serve in this capacity. Um, as you know and many know, um, I'm a native Nashvillean and um, I grew up through the MPS system, grew up right here in Nashville. I've had the pleasure of, again, being in the district as a student, as a teacher, administrator, most recently a central office as a community superintendent. Um, so this role really gives me an opportunity to kind of district-wide um, do what I love to do every day and that's really supporting our students, supporting our teachers, and of course pouring in and supporting our principals as well. Um, it also gives me an opportunity to connect with parents, business partners. I mean, our partnerships are so critical um, to the work that we do. So um, it's just giving me an opportunity to really elevate um, and support the work across the district on a daily basis. So again, I'm very humbled and honored um, to serve in this capacity. And you graduated from Overton? From Overton High School. Well, as a McGavitt graduate, I won't hold that against you. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> um, what, what are your biggest challenges? Yes, I think um, the biggest challenge um, right now is, of course, I'm a long-time long MPS employee, um, and I've been well-informed um, about the work of our district and the needs of our schools and um, engagement. So I, I'm informed. Um, as a director, I want to be well informed um, from a strategic district um, level as well. And so part of that is really just taking the time um, to really connect with all of the stakeholders that are really vested in the work that we do um, every single day. Um, with that, I think we have a great opportunity right now to really reset and refocus on our priority, which are our students. Um, and while that's um, not necessarily a challenge, it's a great opportunity that will lead to um, hopefully much success for us as we close out this academic school year. I think a lot of people want to hear from you that you get it. You, you get why so many people were so upset. D do you understand those emotions? Um, what I do get, I will tell you this, um, again, been a long-term educator, um, what I do get is what it takes in order to um, really support our students, our staff, and to move us forward um, in this business of education. Um, I get that our, our teachers and our employees work hard every single day. I get that we have quality employees, uh, passionate employees who work long hours and long days to make sure that our students um, get what they need and what they deserve. Um, I get that our principals too are highly qualified and skilled. They give of, of themselves a lot um, to make sure that they're keeping their teams um, aligned and in accordance to what our strategic plan suggests or the vision um, for the district. And I think um, another thing I can share is that I, what I get, just being a long-term employee, um, is that how that works, how it plays out from, from each level. I um, believe in high expectations, but I believe in high supports. And I've, I've shared on multiple occasions, when I say high expectations, it's the accountability around doing what I know we're able to do um, every single day, doing what I know our staff knows we can do every single day, and it's because we can. Uh, we have a highly skilled staff. Um, who can really um, make a difference in the lives of, of our students. And so that is what I get. I get this district. Um, I get Nashville because I've had lots of experiences here. And of course, I'm a product or success of MPS. Um, so I get the inner workings of that, the desires of our employees to, d to always do what's in the best interest of our students and our community at large. And, and do you get that morale was extremely low? I get that. Um, you know, in a large urban school district, it has to be a focus um, that we have to be focused on. And there are highs and lows. Um, and as the leaders of the district, it is something that we've got to pay attention to, um, that we have to focus on and invest in. Um, it takes all of us to really address um, the morale, the culture, um, and the climate. Um, and that's why, as a part of my transition plan, I'm taking some time to really listen to really collaborate uh, with our leaders across the board, regardless of um, role or position or current responsibilities. I'm gonna take some time to really listen to them because listening is a key um, ingredient um, to morale in order to make informed decisions around our next steps. But on the front lines, you saw that people were upset, that morale was low. I mean, did you pers personally see that? Um, I don't think I was immune from hearing concerns or um, expressed desires for us to continue to work towards um, morale. And um, my commitment is to, as a director, to, to stay in tune to that. 
um, and really address the concerns that, that might be there. We're a large urban school district and I think we're not um, exempt from any of the challenges that any large urban school district may experience. And so given that, um, I think um, what we have working now with our HR department and looking at some of our policies and procedures is a commitment um, to no matter where we are in the district from school level to various departments um, within MEPS to central office um, to have a high commitment to addressing any morale, any climate issues that might um, be a barrier or permit, prohibit us from getting to the end goals. Uh, just quickly touch on a few issues. Uh, student discipline, you know, we heard during the town hall that we had uh, teachers saying that it, there's chaos in the schools, in, in some schools. Um, what, what, what is What's your answer to those concerns? Yes, and I've um, luckily been a part of some of the conversations um, before this transition and currently as I've transitioned into this new role. Um, I'm excited about the work happening with our with our discipline task force. Um, we've most recently talked about, I mean, it's been kind of put out there within our budget request that we're looking at providing more supports, more additional supports to some of our schools to address um, some of the needs that have been articulated and expressed um, from our school teams. Um, and as you mentioned, I, I get it. I've been a school leader, I've been a principal, I, I'm a teacher, and I understand that there are sometimes, uh, with occasion, given some of the challenges that we see every day, uh, needs for additional wraparound supports, needs for us to be more proactive around um, some of the challenges that our trauma that our students might um, experience. And so, Working with that discipline task force, understanding, um, getting a better understanding of where they're trying to go. It's about us advocating, listening to our schools um, to be better responsive um, to what those needs are. I believe our, our teachers and our administrators know their schools and students best. Um, and so we always want to have a listening ear um, to their needs and continue to advocate around those needs um, given our resources, our limited resources, but the resources we have, we want to make sure we're utilizing them to the best of our ability. But specifically, I've had some conversations with teachers in, in the last few weeks uh, who have been ass assaulted uh, in the schools. And the, the students who perpetrated those assaults are back in the schools pretty quickly. What, what would you say to them? Oh, so um, we have um, a discipline handbook. We have a student parent handbook where we try to be very explicit around um, what our response is when we um, have behaviors exhibited on all of our campuses. And there are some behaviors um, that this the new policy doesn't prohibit us from responding to. Um, and so my expectation for our teachers and for our principals um, is that we will be in, in compliance and alignment to the staff handbook. I don't intend or expect um, for um, any teacher to have to um, endure any um, additional stress or, or distractions that keep them from the business of educating um, our students. And so what we have been doing and will continue to do um, is reviewing that student um, parent handbook on an annual basis and making adjustments um, as we see fit. I previously mentioned the discipline task force that includes um, some teachers, it includes principals, it includes central office staff, and that's something we need to be listening for. Do we have some challenges or barriers um, that we need to remove to ensure that we're protecting the instructional time that's happening um, in our schools from, from bell to bell and from day to day? Do you think that handbook has not been followed as closely as it should have been as far as using those infractions to deal with those problem students? So my experience has been um, that our leaders and our employees have, to the best of their ability, um, been applying the right um, responses to the, the current infraction. Um, I think as I'm transitioning into my new role, uh, what I want to do is to continue to hear and listen more about where we maybe have fallen short and how we can shore those areas up. Okay. Uh, contract spending, what, what's your message on those issues? Um, yes. Yeah, so contract spending partnerships. Um, one of the things I think we do best as educators is really collaborate and share <laughs> best practices um, and ideas. Um, we have had contracts and programs in place long before me. I'm sure there'll be some long um, beyond. Um, our goal is to stay above board. Um, any partnerships that we have, any contracts that we're currently in, maybe, maybe continue or enter into, we just want to stay above board. We want to make sure that we're good stewards um, of our funds. We want to be sure that it's aligned to where we're trying to go. Um, as a district and then we're truly getting a return on the investment um, that we might be um, entering into giving any contracts. Are, are, uh, are you reviewing all the contracts that have been previously awarded? So we do have plans to continue to sit down and review contracts um, 
And I think that should be a part of our practice um, to ensure that um, the contracts we have, again, are aligned to where we're trying um, to go and are going to meet the needs of our schools and our classrooms. Uh, personnel changes. So what, what, what are your thoughts about personnel changes? Sure, I haven't um, had a lot of time <laughs> to really, really think about that. Um, the first few weeks or so um, of my transition, again, I'm going to be really focused in on prioritizing our students, really listening, really collaborating um, with all of our all of our stakeholders. My goal is to make informed and strategic moves um, if there are any personnel changes. And we know any change of this level, um, there are changes that could potentially um, be um, looked into or discussed um, as, as we move forward. But as of today, I've not made any um, decisions around uh, personnel changes, uh, but it is a part of my transition plan in to make sure that we're, again, leveraging all the successes and celebrating those. We want to make sure that if we have successes in pockets that we um, leverage those and make sure they're across our system. Uh, we also want to make sure that if there's any gaps or holes that we're filling those um, really, really quickly. Uh, in, in this role, I have to make courageous, I have to make um, decisions, I have to be courageous, I have to make hard decisions sometimes around doing what's best for our students, but that's something I'm committed to, that's something that I would impress upon our staff members um, to be committed to, because it's really all about our students. And, and so having those hard conversations, making shifts, whether it's in structure or policy, uh, we want to ensure that we're doing that across the board. Is there any area right now you can say, I'm going to go in a different direction than Dr. Joseph did? Um, so what I'm focused on right now is what's working really well for us um, and identifying the gaps that uh, may be perceived or a reality around where we need to go um, as a district. Um, I know recently we've had a change in our HR department. Um, we were fortunate enough to have a board to um, call for an audit of our HR department and just recently it was released for our new HR officer to take a deep look um, into that. So I'm confident in his ability and skill to, to do that. Um, I'm looking forward to the conversations, reviewing those recommendations and ensuring that we're ensuring that um, piece of our organization up. Um, a lot of policies and procedures, again, we're not perfect, but we want to be sure that we're doing the best that we can. We're as efficient and effective as we can every single day to provide the quality level of service and education to all of our families. Uh, in, in recent months, there have been some racial tensions. Um, you know, some would say that Dr. Joseph in some way had, had exacerbated those tensions. Uh, as a woman of color, the first woman of color in this position. What, what is your perspective uh, about those tensions and what is your perspective about how to begin the healing process? Yes, yeah, so um, of course a lot of, a large part of my background has been working in some of the most diverse areas and schools in, in Nashville. Um, and I'm really proud um, of that work. As a matter of fact, um, at the last um, school I had the pleasure and honor of serving as principal, uh, one of our distinct um, goals that we were able to accomplish and we see as a success was really closing achievement gaps for our students. Um, and with that comes the intentionality um, around um, supporting, addressing, responding to the needs of all of our students and, and all of our families, um, regardless of their background, uh, regardless of their English language proficiency. Um, and so I, I have a background that has lent itself um, to being able to um, connect and address and really understand, um, or at least an attempt to really understand. Um, the needs of our various um, student groups and, and populations. Um, so that's something I embrace and I see as a strength for, for MMPS. Um, so as director, I look forward to continuing those partnerships, um, continuing to push and charge um, forward as a district um, to dig deep and really try to remove any barriers or any conversations that might keep us um, from the business of educating um, our students. It'll probably be up to myself and my team to continue to create avenues by which we can engage in that dialogue. Um, to really bring us together because as adults we don't want to be the barrier that's keeping us from the success of our students. And, and, and there were some employees who felt like uh, if, if they raised concerns about discipline they would be accused of being racist. Uh, so, so how do you heal those hurt feelings, that, that sense that us versus them? 
I think um, if that is a concern, I think it's something that we have to definitely address. Um, I, I've, I've heard the conversations around needing some time to heal. Um, a word that I will use is a, a time for more collaboration and listening. We need to be willing to listen and hear those concerns and also be willing to address them. Um, again, a large urban school district, there will be things that come up um, from time to time. Of course, we want to be proactive, but our goal is to also be responsive um, if there are concerns of that nature that um, come up. And as the director, I want to model um, on a daily basis how we can engage in that type of dialogue, that type of learning, um, and express concern. I believe there is space, there is time for us to listen and learn from one another and just be willing um, to address things that need to be addressed. Last word. What, what, what is your, your message that you want to send? That anything we haven't touched on? No, I don't have anything um, in addition to I, I'm just excited about the opportunity to really um, get it right and get our students um, the focus of er everything that we do um, every day. They're our priority and they deserve um, our attention, our time, and the resources we have available.